heat. Heat is molecules moving around. And today we're going to talk about heat as it moves from one place to another, how heat moves around through things, and that's called thermal conductivity. Sort of like wires conduct electricity, metals can conduct um, heat. And I've got six different kinds of metals here. We've got copper and aluminum and zinc and tin and lead, oh, and iron and then lead. All right? And they've all been painted with a special red paint that changes color as it warms up. And I've got steam running through this top pipe right here that's heating up the different bars of metal. All right? And now as the color, uh, as the red color changes to a lighter color, right, you can see the bars of metal heat up slowly. All right? And so you should see different colors appear as we keep heating them up. All right, so here we've got six different metals. And you see that um, here that the uh, aluminum and the zinc, okay, the aluminum and zinc, the second and the third ones from the left, are changing color. They're darker, so they conduct heat better than some of the other metals. And if you remember some of my talks about temperature, uh, thermodynamics, right? We talked about how aluminum is a great conductor of heat, and that's why we make baking pans out of them to make cookies. And as we continue to heat up here, um, you can see some of the others heat up. We're going to let it go and then speed up time elapsed, and we'll see how, how it goes maybe at a little bit faster rate, so we don't have to wait here all day. So, as we take a look here, we see that aluminum has transmitted heat the fastest. It's the highest conductivity. And right behind that is probably copper, followed by tin, nope, excuse me, zinc, and then tin and lead and, oh, iron and lead, okay, tin and iron and lead don't conduct heat very well. All right? So if you were going to make a pot that conducted heat well to maybe use in cooking, what were you going to use? We're going to use a copper pot and an aluminum pot. Okay? Now, this does not, uh, is not a measurement of how much heat they can contain. It's how fast the heat moves through it. All right? And that's two different measurements. But there you go. This is why you would probably want to make, if you want an even distribution of heat, like a baking pan, you want to use aluminum. All right? So thermal conductivity, how fast heat is moved from one place to another through a substance. There right. you go. Now I have a nice big rod with a piece of paper around the outside. And I'm going to stick it in the flame. So if I put this in the flame, we can see what happens. All right, you see that there are stripes appearing on this. Okay? Why is that? Okay, why do I get a nice stripe pattern of burnt, not burnt, and burnt again? Well, if I take the paper off, you can see that this rod is actually made out of alternating disks of metal and wood and metal and wood. And wherever there's a piece of wood, you get burned paper. Okay, so a piece of wood and a stripe. Okay, so where this stripe right here is, is got paper behind it. All right, it's got wood behind it. Okay, and so the reason that you don't burn the paper here is because of thermal conductivity. Okay, you heat up the paper here, and the heat is transmitted into the metal disks very quickly away from the paper. So even though we're heating the paper, it doesn't get very hot because all the heat flows into the metal disk, and you get really cool stripes. So now we are going to take a paper cup and boil some water. How come I can boil water in a paper cup? Well, for the same reason we got stripes on the cylinder. When I apply heat 
to the cup, right, it gets nice and hot, but it shouldn't burn. All it does is it slowly heats, it heats up the water. So the paper gets hot, but as the paper heats up, the water absorbs the heat and is continually taking heat away from the paper to keep it from burning. All right, and in fact, as we'll slowly see here, the water is already starting to boil. And so as the heat is applied to the paper cup, right, again, it's, it, it doesn't exceed its burning temperature. It doesn't get hot enough to burn the paper because the, temperature, the heat is always being pulled into the water. And it's just heating up the water. Now, at the very top of the cup, you can see that it's starting to char up at the top at a certain line. And that's the water level. Right, because there's no water up there to pull the heat away. In fact, we just lit our cup on fire. All right, so you can boil water in a paper cup. Just make sure the flames don't reach the part where the cup doesn't have any water in it anymore. And so, boiling water in a paper cup is done with the science of thermal conductivity.